Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image. Just reading a really cool article over on Luminous Landscape. That's Michael Reichman's site. You should check it out if you get a chance. That's luminous-landscape.com. Uh, Peter Van Den, uh, Peter Vanden Hammer is a physicist, um, a photographer who's a physicist by training and has been working in the electronics industry in the Netherlands for about 20 years. He does an analysis or and a review of the DxO sensor scores, um, and he basically um, looking at how they're done, how they uh, apply, and uh, are they fair and whatnot. Um, so there's a section in here what I found really pertinent. And he asked the question, how fair is the DxO Mark sensor score? And uh, basically he comes out and says there's no objective answer. Um, basically, largely because uh, every imaging expert would have a different answer or a different uh, personal preference for what they would like to see benchmarked. Uh, same with computers. If you're looking at benchmarking on, on computers and you're trying to figure out what's the best, you'll notice that different sites do different benchmarks. They're not all the same. Um, however, he says that uh, his initial impression, he analyzed the data and he analyzed what they were doing and um, he felt it was fair and uh, pretty useful. Uh, he says that uh, he couldn't find any serious flaws, uh, which is good. It's good to know. Um, I myself like the DxO Mark sensor uh, uh, evaluations and the and the information they impart. Um, I think they give us a good pertinent uh, thumbnail understanding, if you will. Um, kind of they can box it up into some quickly understandable relationships to how a camera and a sensor compare to other sensors. Um, he talks about the complexity of the DxO Mark sensor scores. He says, you know, that's a way of life, and it's something that um, he finds it hard when you get sensors that are within a few marks of each other. How does that translate into real-world test if you're out shooting with your camera? And and that's a good question because sometimes myself I think about that, and uh, I look at, you know, you sometimes a camera looks like it's 20 points off, but then you look at the breakdown of it, and, and I think you know, like my 60D versus my D7000 scores, 60D scores fairly low compared to the, the D7000. However, in real life using it, as far as the sensor is concerned and the quality, I'm not so sure that that's a good indi indicative um, response or evaluation to which one's going to give you the best image quality. Um, he also talks about the undocumented formula, uh, the, the method to how DxO Mark is doing these sensor evaluations, and it's it basically seems like it's proprietary. So there's no way it's not open for peer review or open to see what they're doing to decide. Hey, do we agree with this or do we not? So that's a point he makes. Uh, he also looks at fixed pattern noise treatment. He says that uh, fixed pattern noise—that's the type of noise that you can you can get rid of in Photoshop, uh, as opposed to what he calls irregular noise or temporal noise. That's the noise that that you can't really deal with in Photoshop. And uh, basically says that if a camera can fix this uh, in in house in the camera, then the DxO Mark sensor evaluation is going to look favorably upon that. But if the camera can't doesn't fix that itself, then it's going to score lower. And this isn't really something. This is an area where Photoshop can fix it, even if the camera doesn't. Why is it scoring lower for the sensor? And I guess you could take you know either view of that. This, the camera is actually doing it, and then so the output is what it is. Or you know by the time you put it through Photoshop, that should be how you look at. It. So that's an interesting point. He talks about dynamic range, um, basically how DxO Mark is handling the dynamic range when they're evaluating the sensor. Is um, they look at a series of exposures from the camera and uh, look at the quality level, how good the level of quality of that image is from the best of the series. So that's pretty fair because, I mean, every camera has a chance to give its best showing. And um, he looks at uh, one of his questions is, why are they measuring the color depth at a low ISO? He says most people probably couldn't see noise at um, color noise at a low ISO anyway. So what's the point? Why not do it at a more pertinent uh, area? Um, and then he also talks about the... Um, the single perceived image quality metric that could be measured at different ISO levels. That's what he says here. And uh, he's saying that it might have been clearer to basically have a metric uh, or best perceived image quality uh, at different high ISO levels to give us an idea of how something performs. In other words, 
um, have a set test range that you perform at each ISO level in a given camera to allow us to compare that to other cameras. He thinks that might be a more useful comparison to have to judge these cameras. And I agree, I think that's probably a good idea. And maybe, hopefully, DxO Marks uh, will read this article and see it and uh, take some of these thoughts that he's he's obviously put a lot of time and effort into reviewing this and going through this. And I, again, wholly encourage you to go over to luminouslandscape.com and read the article for yourself. It's a, it's a long article, but it has a lot of good information if you're interested on, on DxO Mark and the sensors. And... Um, then he also has another suggestion. He'd like to see like a visual representation along with the sensor evaluations on how big the sensor is. Because rather than just saying megapixels, people don't always you know relate to that on how many megapixels is actually the size. And also, how many megapixels does not equate to how big the sensor is. So he'd like to see a visual representation so that you could compare that in your head and go, oh, you know, that's a pretty small sensor. That's that's APS C minus, you know, half fifty percent or something. It's it's something small like in a Canon G twelve, or that's an APS C sensor, like in a sixty D or a D seven thousand. Or hey, that's a full frame thirty five millimeter sensor like what is in the uh, D seven hundred or what is in the five D Mark II or something like that. So that's a good idea too. I like that idea. Visual representations are always handy for f figuring these type of things out when you're trying to sort through this data and trying to relate it to how it translates to what what you're thinking about or your camera or or the cameras you're looking to buy. So, uh, anyways, great article. Again, that's by Peter Vanden Hammer. He's a physicist working in the electronics industry. Articles over at luminouslandscape.com, and uh, he sums it all up with. Uh, a, a look at how fair the DxO Mark sensor scores are, which is, is a great uh, read. So uh, thanks for tuning in, folks. Uh, tune in again soon. We'll be back with some more video posts, some more articles, and we'll keep you up to date with what's going on in the world of photography. Thanks.